Hello, my name is Cam Wolai from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. Hello, my name is Rachel Renner, also from Richmond, Virginia, and I too am an anarchist. And this is your 12th episode of The Resistance. And before we begin with the news from Underground Stories, we're going to start off with uh, some announcements. And a special announcement that uh, we'd like to share are the uh, awesome... Oh, right behind me. Well, <laughs> what do they call it? The uh, anarchy swag. Uh, you have this awesome looking um, apron you can wear um, as you're cooking freshly delights. And just show that anarchy never looked uh, delicious. <laughs> she's like what <laughs> I'm trying my best here um, but you no know, at the same time uh, no violent coercion was used in the shameless yeah way. yeah <laughs> so our man she's our local craftsman around. here in Richmond and uh, so she, she uh, created whatever design or um, I guess whatever preference you, you want um, Whatever incarnation of textiles you so desire yeah yeah. And again, the armbands are, you know, all colors are welcome. You know, there's not an anarchy movement that divides within, you know, separation of uh, colors and such. It's it's pretty much uh, also at the same time uh, meeting that need for individuality. So any colors, any shapes and all that stuff is more than welcome. You can appropriate the rainbow. You don't even have to have the red side up all the time. <laughs> uh, yeah, the it, whole spectrum is yours. All right. It's through government that we limit ourselves. And you can find her work on uh, an Etsy under um, um, Esther Magpie. Yes, that's, uh, Esther Magpie. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have the links provided at the end of this uh, video. Um, and again, yeah, uh, so a lot of interesting agri services here in Richmond that we can kind of connect and uh, you know share and trade. And uh, yeah, so with that, uh, I guess agris announcement. We're going to begin with our news from underground. Richmond officer arrested for exposing himself outside mall. A Richmond police officer was arrested earlier this month for allegedly exposing himself in the Chesterfield Town Center parking lot. Chesterfield police said a woman spotted David Ruland in his vehicle with his genitals exposed on October 7th, my birthday, around 10.45 a.m. in the mall parking lot. Ruland was how charged. How tall was she and how long was his car? Yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> Because I once had a very interesting conversation with a tow truck driver about how many people masturbate while they're driving. Right, and I wonder how, uh, well, I guess how would, uh, how much distraction does that cause in most incidences, but I guess... Well, how obvious more was he making his masturbation? You yeah, know, yeah, 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 yeah. I guess pretty obvious, I guess, at that point. You are, are kind of looking for someone to watch. He's trying to make a point, you know. Yeah. <laughs> They give him those big laptops, you know. I figured she would have initially thought he was fooling around with that. More than likely, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it's interesting. So you're not allowed to look at your laptop or have, uh, I guess, these kinds of electronic devices while you're driving because it's just distraction unless you have a blue costume and uh, that uh, excuses you from from having uh, that particular law apply to you. Um, cell phones, you know, laptops, perfectly acceptable. Um not so much like intoxication, you know. It's not about you know the actual impairment you suffer. It's about yeah pushing one thing forward despite another. It says here, quote: It makes you question: Are you really here to secure us, to make us feel comfortable, or not? Uh, this is a local Richmond woman, Tavia Matthews, who lives here in Richmond, and uh, CBS. Six, Chelsea Rarick went to Ruland's home on Friday. I saw this on video, it's pretty interesting. Uh, when asked about <laughs> the alleged incident, Ruland would not comment and said he's hired a lawyer. Um, but of course, the, the news channel agency didn't um, actually show and depict who this person looks like. Uh, so it's interesting this double standard contradiction, uh, hypocritical, hypocritical measure that they have. Well, like, of course, if you're accused yourself, although not proven guilty, but just accused, uh, the cops have no problem sharing that photo and information to the media. Now, they have no problem plastering that and, and, and exposing you. Just, just for even being accused, not uh, going through trial and finding out that you are guilty, but even already humiliating you, even already embarrassing you, and putting to that, um, to that, to the trial motion that it's not even begun. But of course, when it's this police officer, you don't get to see who he looks like. Uh, you have no glimpse of that. Uh, the media won't even show it. 
All right, so it's an interesting double standard Who hypocritical is it that stance for that. Those, um, those printouts you find in gas stations of mugshots. I mean, the police department has to have some control over releasing that, don't they? I would imagine. Uh, well, I guess uh, with a lot of media agencies, they have a lot of good connections with the cops, so they can um, say, "Hey, you know, I guess there's always Freedom of Information Act. There's always a way to to request like the latest people who have been kind of brought in to." Uh, to the jails who've been placed into that. Um, there's uh, your connections, of course, in the police department where they, they you know, uh, often will allow you to have access, whereas other people don't have access to that information. Um, so I guess it depends on the connections with that. But at the same time, there's like smoking gun website where like once your photo is already taken and you've gone through the processing of being arrested, that photo is pretty much freely available for anyone. Uh, so you can pretty much look at all everyone's mugshots, um, even if they've not been proven guilty. It's just the arraignment portion of um, being arrested. So if this guy was. Did they uh, mention if he was on duty or not? That's a good point. Uh, it says Jean Lepi, a spokesperson for Richmond Police, says shortly after being informed of the the arrest, Rulan has been placed on administrative leave pending the outcome of an internal investigation. Because I think it's pretty relevant as to whether he was in, like, the blue costume when he was obviously projecting if he was wanking off. Yeah, I, I mean, seriously, yeah, 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 yeah. who can't... Not being able to wank off subtly in a vehicle is kind of akin to, like, not being able to breastfeed and not show your nipple. I mean... Yeah, and, and, it's not that hard. Yeah, and, and this goes to a lot of the different uh, ways that we can meet these needs and preferences for security. You know, you can have a security uh, company that caters to very conservative groups that doesn't want to see uh, flesh and you know skin or anything like that. You can also have an interesting community not, not nearby that's more fetish orientated, you know, leather chaps and all that stuff. And you know, that's the kind of security you want to pay for. You know, whether out of um, you know entertaining purposes or um, you know whatever interesting fetish or preference that meets that cultural norm. And uh, in, in this particular area, uh, you don't really have a freedom of choice. You're, you're still well, paying for Well, think of all the different that. ways you can interpret it if you see a person masturbating. I mean, there's the one directly along gender lines that, you know, there's a certain, you know, perhaps threat to it if a man is masturbating in public, you know, since he's in the you know, penetrator yeah. position and all that. There's also the thing of, you know, well, if you see an animal in the zoo, you know it's doing it recreationally, where if a human does it, they're perhaps trying to project it because they've been taught that you always do that in private, so they're trying to make a statement with it. And then the third, if that human being is in a position where he can, in a very sanctioned way, you know, bully you, detain you, shoot you under the right circumstances and not face the same repercussions as the majority of society, there's an added weight to that action, you know? I mean, it becomes all the more frightening. At least that's how I do it. The idea of being a policeman is to frighten people. Yeah, it's... It's different in that, uh, all right, so the interesting conundrum that you're faced then is that, you know, when you're this blue costume, uh, you're supposed to hold them responsible, you know, for their actions and such like that. But oftentimes when they're not They're above blue costume, rude emotions, you know. Right. They are able to make the decisions for us that we're somehow less capable of making. Yeah. But when you're not wearing the blue costume, though, though technically you're still an officer in the way that they still present themselves and, and act upon that, saying that they're still a cop full-time, 24-7. Yeah, no, it does not say so, if he was on duty or not. I, I, actually, that's, that's actually a really good question. Uh, it actually doesn't... I don't, I don't know if it actually goes into detail whether he was or not. Um, it says, Ruling has been an RPD officer since 2008. Mm -hmm. According to the city's website, he works in the department's fourth precinct. Those who live in that area said the alleged, alleged incident is disappointing, but said they don't think it will affect the overall image of the RPD. Uh, well, that's interesting. So in this particular area, they want to target the individual uh, and not the collective. So only when it's at, in their convenience. Uh, so that's kind of funny. Well, we have to kind of remember, though, like even... Even this position, even if you're working for a business or a corporation, or not a corporation, it will cease to exist without a government. But whatever capacity that you feel you belong to or organization, you're that you know first step ambassador to kind of present it. So uh, this kind of person who presents himself as such, you know, is also presenting uh, an ambassador position for that organization. Uh, and as so much that you know, he's not the first person who's been caught doing a lot of these um, 
shenanigans. For example, you look at uh, like the Pentagon, who they found that many of them have been looking up uh, child pornography, and but of course when that media news outlet came out about awareness of the situation, it's been kind of swept under the rug. Uh, the investigation hasn't been rolling. It's been something that they can try to keep pushing off and pushing off until another date until hopefully people forget about it. Uh, you know, it's kind of like uh, what John Edward did with when he, when it was discovered that he was, um, he had a, a mistress who was paying off you know, like in the tens of thousands of dollars and the opportune opportunity for him to, to talk about it was during the Olympics. You know, when people are distracted. And so, yeah, so this seems like one of those things that the news is kind of hoping, well, the police are kind of hoping that there will be other distractions to kind of forget about this incident as they kind of do so when they're caught red-handed doing the exact same things they'll throw you into a cage for and expose you and humiliate you and put your photo up there. Um, but not when you're in position of actually, you know, uh, enforcing these rules. Uh, the it's more important that they don't besmirch their image than they release this man's, you know, image as a concern for, you know, safety. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it says here, uh, so Frank Paul says, you can't judge the whole department by one particular officer. So ruling is scheduled to appear in Chesterfield General District Court on October 23rd. So... So it'll be interesting to see what the uh, not leaping to the that. issue of why it was doing it, leaping to the issue of you know this isn't what policemen all are. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they're they're in the business we of actually, uh, even still, they're in the business of um, of deciding what kinds of fetishes or what kinds of uh, activities are permissible or not. Uh, there was a uh, prostitution bust uh, recently here in Richmond uh, a week ago. Uh, then involved eight people and uh, it was consensual of course it was uh, voluntary uh, it had nothing to do with uh, non-consent which is pretty much what the basis of the Richmond Police Department are funded on which is what government's funded on so um, it's interesting I guess in, in the way that uh, that they enforce those still right they enforce what's permissible or not permissible and, and again you don't really have much of a choice in the types of preferences that you would enforce on your own property uh, more in the general area of the community that you live in. Uh, again, the preference that it's wrong for everyone is applied to everyone in a geographic region. You don't have the freedom to split off and diverge and create all these communities of preferences that could, could meet those needs and kinks or interests. Um, it harks back to... But if in nothing the subtext of an action wasn't the possibility of violence, people wouldn't have to live in fear of that. Yeah, yeah. Under uh, statism, there's no safe word. So, I'd like to uh, continue the next uh, topic. Let's see here. Ah, man at Center 8 News investigation guilty on fraud charges. In Louisa, judges found that a man at the center of the Channel 8 News investigation into contractor fraud is guilty of contracting without a license. He didn't do anything wrong, mind you. We just weren't told that he was not capable of doing anything wrong. Right. Which means whatever guilt there is in this case, the spoils of it go to the government. And so uh, to fill in the meat of the nature, um, let's see, he left a half-constructed porch that legitimate contractors described as a death trap. So, yeah. In their expert opinion, this shit would have killed you. Right. Porch of death. Okay. Um, trying to find the actual faults so of the porch. Wasn't up to code. Not acceptable. Um, uh, okay. Um, he did at one point take one thousand dollars from a Richmond man for a construction that was ne that he never performed. No, that's just oh no theft right there. Um, He was convicted of construction fraud for taking nearly one thousand dollars to tear down an old porch and build a new brick wall on a job he never completed. But this this has yeah. nothing so much to do with a contractor license or anything. A, a piece of paper doesn't tell you whether you're good or not. A piece of paper, um, especially from the state, doesn't tell you whether you're trustworthy or uh, you, you uphold your end of your bargain or you're a good person who upholds their contracts. Um, yeah, the final sentence is the most telling. Uh, Rucker has filed a civil suit hoping to recoup her lost money, but says she's not holding out hope. But, right. you know, he's 
it's been determined he was not competent to do this. You know, that's... The only reason he's uh, going, facing any kind of criminal charges is not because of fraud, it's not because uh, he did not put his contracts uh, or any of that matter. Uh, it's only because he did not have a contractor's license and uh, didn't beg permission from the mafia first to, <laughs> they didn't get their piece of the meal. Um, you know, so that's, that's why uh, he, he's going to court. Not so much because of, uh, it was criminal or, or in the way that he's able to pay restitution to the victim. You know, when you go into a, a state prison, you don't really have an opportunity to, to do that. So in a way, they, the state also then robs you of that opportunity. You know, for this woman who would like to get paid, of course, anyone would like to get paid or be reimbursed or have that restitution payment made uh, in the capacity that the, the offender agrees to. Um, you know, would want to work, he understands that he, he did wrong and, you know, from risk of being entirely socially ostracized, yeah, here's an opportunity for you to make amends and to uh, have another opportunity to, to do what's right. But when the state gets involved, uh, they have a monopoly on the justice system. And so what ends up happening is uh, they are the ones who first have an opportunity to kind of rip you of that real justice. You know, they throw them into a cage that you're forced to pay for, and that individual does not have an opportunity to uh, negotiate or t to the victim. You know, it's the victim who should have first say, not strangers, not the political rulers. And so, of course, he's not going to get anything. You now, this guy has been lying for quite some time, saying that he, he had a lot of money and he, ha he hasn't. And, uh, and, of course, you can't make the argument, of course, that uh, people even with licenses don't do a lot of bad stuff. Again, it's just a piece of paper. It doesn't grant you this magical veil that you become the best there is at what you do just because you, you beg for permission from the state. And that's all that licenses and permits are. Um, just permission slips just to do what you want to do, you know, to do, to, to trade and to interact um, and to, to meet your community's needs. You know, you, uh, licenses and uh, permits are just another way that the state extorts from you. The next story uh, we're going to go over is the German watchdog threatens to use instruments of torture against Amazon. That's what the, kind of like Wonder Woman and the Nazis. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what the head title oh says. Yeah, God. literally. Hmm. All right, so uh, Germany's antitrust watchdog accused Amazon of undermining competition when dealing with third-party merchants, and said it would impose reform unless the internet retailer changes rules. A German newspaper reported. Luckily, we have instruments of torture. This is quote. <laughs> Luckily, we have instruments of torture which we would use if necessary. Andreas Munt, the president of the German the cartel. the people who couldn't play fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for some very appropriate sayings for, for you know, agencies of the state. Uh, a struggle with competition authorities in the second largest market of the United States would add to Amazon's woes. It's German operations Why couldn't been, they just bring forth all the people that Amazon held the gun to ahead of and then, okay, because there aren't any. There aren't any, and yeah. Its German operations have been rattled by a dispute over employees' pay, and a trade union has worn off that staff could strike during the Christmas holiday season. Uh, I'll probably we'll go. Panzer and I will probably go into the death Germany about, that stole Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably the next AV talk will be on uh, public unions, and uh, well, I guess mostly private unions are mostly where the trouble is. Um, no. I'm sorry, take that back, public unions, government unions. Uh, the terms of Amazon Marketplace, in effect, obstruct competition. Munt said, according to a pre-release on Sunday of Newspapers Monday edition, quote, we're in talks with Amazon to eliminate these impediments to competition. You know, what are these impediments? So he continues, if I necessary... the government acts like it's being stolen from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's going to go much in detail. And actually, what it is that you they feel like doing... You capture lunch money. Ooh. Right. Ooh. <laughs> so he says, if necessary, we'll issue a crystal clear of decree. Separately, Amazon has been criticized over its tax payments. And leading policymakers have called for a new German government to crack down on tax avoidance. All right, so that's that right there, right, right there is why, why they're harping on Amazon. Because uh, they find a way as to, as to prevent being extorted even further. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so when people talk about, well, well, these 
businesses are going overseas in different areas to find ways in the loopholes and the tax system. The books came just the same. They yeah. Ca- they paid the shipping company. Yeah. They paid the supplier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they paid the printer and they paid the dryer. <laughs> and they got sold just the same. Without jails, without cops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so, and so you'll find that's that's really what, what why why they're going after Amazon. You know, one one of the particular reasons is because they're not paying their full share of you know extortion fees called taxes. And you know, if you feel like this negative animosity, it's like, well, they should be paying their fair share. But you know, you have to look at yourself as the individual, and you can't tell me that you've never looked at the annual tax report form that you have to fill out if you not try to find ways to not to have to pay any extra taxes. Right? The fact you have to take an exemption, the fact that you're looking for ways to cut corners or to save your applicable for this or this applies to you so you don't have to fork up over you know, $40, 50 $100 or more. So, so you're also acting in the same manner a business would. Right? You understand even that, that this is your property, this is your money, that you don't want to give that up to, to a stranger and not so much that you're able to escape that allowance. Uh, and that's what Amazon's trying to do. You know, in a way, we're all kind of agorists in that matter. And then, uh, you know, the fact that you have to hide some of your money from the state shows, shows, shows the reality of the nature of the relationship you have with government. We could provide a superior service, yeah. or we could bring out the implements of torture. Yeah. Yeah. So Fortunately, course, we have the implements of torture. And that's all mm-hmm. the government has is torture. Mm-hmm. All of them are, are, are implements God, we're of Germans. torture. We're supposed to be good at inventing efficient <laughs> shit. Why don't we start our own Amazon? Yeah. Um, mm. And it says, at the heart of the watchdog's complaints about Amazon's marketplace is a requirement that third-party merchants must offer their cheapest price when selling their products over the platform. So you'll, you'll find you, Amazon is not forcing you to create your business on their platform. And that's so much that eBay is not pointing a gun at you to trade and to place things at auction. Completely voluntary. There, there's no gun, there's no force, there's no, um, you know, the most that they'll say is like, look, here's, it's, it's free to sign up. Maybe you'll get a membership discount. Maybe you could provide some credit. Amazon provides credit. Uh, there's a lot of different positive incentives to kind of encourage you to try it. You know, first trials are free and all kinds of stuff like that they would have. But, and, and the capacity that this is voluntary, the opposite with government is not, right? And on some level, it's based on skill, not coercion. I mean, just today, my coworkers are saying, God, eBay can really be a full-time job. You know, just, yeah. <laughs> far, you know, if you want to grow a good garden, you got to work at it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and a just lot of people another do. Another reason yeah. I'm my Etsy profile. I've not been <laughs> planting a lot lately. But I'm working on other things. That's cool. That's cool. No. I'm not going to go threaten other sellers with violence or right. anything. And, and Amazon doesn't do that. Governments do that. And, you know, it's not Amazon cops. There's no such thing as an Amazon cop walking on the street. It's government cops. Um, but at the same time, you look at that Amazon, again, they're not pre- even preventing you from having the freedom to compete. Uh, in many ways, corporations do, though, through their government. You know, they create rules that are only applicable to everyone else except for the ex- exception of the business that's providing the campaign funds to, you know, to the political rulers. You know, this, this also includes uh, Biden in Delaware. Um, so that's, that's, what you, that's, that's what's pretty much what's going on here with Amazon. You know, it's, um, governments is kind of looking at them and targeting because they're not paying their taxes. And, of course, I'm sure there's all their corporate lobbying uh, interests firms out there uh, trying to also target uh, Amazon as a way to kind of bring down their competitor because they can't do it in a more creative, uh, innovative way themselves. It's not that Amazon is harmful, they just haven't paid their bribe. Right. So, talking about the free market, I'd like to... All right, well, what we all want to break free of, death! Life after death, new technique to halt dying process. Okay, the line between life and deer, life and deer, life and death. (laughs) We were talking about deers earlier and their persistence. Probably that came from. What is fall season? So it's mating season for deers. So they're either running into each other or running into cars. Yeah, I was in Rockville, Maryland, and there was this like noble stag in the middle of a subdivision. You know, just everything so prim and quaint. (laughs) Her and the hunter. I'm going to go run against something now. Just, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, a... Yeah. No, it's Little definitely beautiful here in, uh, in Richmond for fall mm-hmm. season, autumn. 
Well, I guess, trees, yeah, perfect leaves. timing then for the um, uh, life and death uh, article. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it is an October country and start to think of one's own mortality. Um, but the line between life and death is not as clear as once thought, now that developments in the science of resuscitation have made it possible to revive people even after hour, even hours after their heart has stopped beating and they are declared dead, medical experts say. That should be how everything should be followed. This is all something we are told via the internet. Yeah, well, yeah, and, and these are, well... I cannot guarantee that any of this is truth. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, like, I would believe, like, what my dentist would have to say about in that specific area of authority that he wields, uh, I would not, I, I guess, look at a politician who's not a dentist, who's not a doctor, who's not a farmer, who's not an engineer, who's never been in the, you know, free market, who's never had a business, to have some sense of uh, understanding how these things work. Yeah, certainly. I mean, lawyers become politicians. You specialize in law. You yeah. create your own area of expertise, and it's the expertise of how to rationalize bullying. Yeah. It's a great niche, you know? <laughs> We've been dependent on it for a very long time. But much like, you know, blacksmithing, it's time has come. Yeah. It is sad the longbowman's passing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just send them out to pasture, you know? They can become, you know, mediators or dog catchers. I don't know. Well, I guess for lawyers, so there'll still be a, a need for them in the dispute resolution organizations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mediators. Um, yeah, yeah. And that's in, in the... They can become actors. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Stummer stock will be... They're there. very good professional liars already, to begin with. <sighs> yes, anyway, sorry. I'm, it's been a long day. Energy failing. Shut down. <laughs> okay, I will not die yet. The process of unraveling the mysteries of death on the cellular level, scientists have learned that death does not occur at a single moment, but instead is a process. Well, that seems kind of a foregone conclusion. It is actually after a person has died, by our current definition of death, that the cells of the body start their own process of dying. This process could take hours of time, and we could potentially reverse that. So, that whole Princess Bride thing about mostly dead? There's something in that. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one thing to do, go through his pockets for his change. Uh, the death process. It was once thought that after the heart stops pumping blood throughout the body, a person has only a few minutes before suffering permanent brain damage, blah, blah. Brain damage comes from lack of oxygen. When somebody's been without oxygen, we know that the whole bunch of signals and now the cells are dying, and then it just come time to die. Prepare to evacuate soul. And, you know, <laughs> Hollywood has their own misty, glowy takes on that shit. Um, how can a, long can a person remain pulseless? Um, hyperthermia, through which the brain is, you know, decreasing its need for oxygen and aborting the pathways cells take to receive this oxygen. But these body controlling cooling techniques have improved recovery time. So basically, if you stop the signal, um, the body doesn't get the news that it's dead. Let's see, there's a state-of-the-art resuscitation that the idea of cooling the body after cardiac arrest has been around for a few decades. In fact, that's usually how they control uh, rabies in patients. They induce a coma so that the virus can't take hold as easily. It's the premise of uh, Forever Young. Uh, I've not seen this one. Well, it's like an experimental project came out uh, in this movie. I think Harrison Ford is in it, where he tries um, this project where he is able to freeze his body for a while but then eventually he's forgotten as you know because it's a government program <laughs> so they forget that they froze a guy to begin with and then decades pass and he it's comes a new campaign through. year <laughs> forget about killer bees there are no more killer bees <laughs> He's, he's in, at first the crate is in the warehouse with all the other crates in, uh, in, in uh, Indiana Jones and uh, <laughs> something happens he's able to come out and of course is in the modern age now uh, so cryogenically freezing yourself or other appropriate term or known as um, Walt Disney what are we going to do with Walt Disney I know right so that's that, so that's kind of what you'll, you'll find in the free market free market is trying to find again solutions options choices uh, perhaps one day in the capacity where death doesn't have to be a choice. Uh, with government, you, you don't have a choice. Inevitably, it will kill you. You know, that's the only thing that's certain with government. You know, death and taxes. Um, you know, in a free market, it doesn't have to be that way. 
And in a free market without a state, of course, there's no taxes. In a free market, you also encourage research and development. There's no restrictions on embryonic stem research. Uh, there's no stifling and uh, having to you know, give up a lot of your money and lobbying the government. All that can be reinvested back in research and development to create nanotechnology or to create better ways to kind of um, replace organs, grow them. You know, they've already grown a human heart uh, a few years ago. So, you know, after that, you know, it's, it's the endless possibilities that could arise uh, in a free market. You know, again, government doesn't create anything. Uh, all that's just stolen money, all that. For, it's uh, even in research development, it's believed it's, I guess the statistics come out, it's like for every uh, dollar that the government takes, I guess in taxpayer money, it's actually a dollar and 25 cents that's actually taken from the free market that could have been invested in those particular areas. I'd like to entertain the idea that a longer lifespan isn't individual for the degree of intellect the average government wants their citizenry to have. I mean, the success of nations up till now has been pretty, you know, breeding centric, hence a lot of things that were outlawed and discouraged, you know, um, abortion, homosexuality, you know, um, who could be employed, who could vote, who could gain sovereignty, you know, I mean, manpower certainly, but not brain power. Brain power yeah. leads to, you know, people with more ideas of opportunism and, you know, the whole knowledge diasporizing, you know, freedom of information, you know, we know what's going on in other parts of the world, so it's not such an us or them thing anymore, so there doesn't have to be more of us or, you know, less of them. Yeah, um, I think that's kind of what it boils down to in a lot of ways as well, you know, it, it doesn't behoove us to live too long. Yeah, We want to be governed. Yeah. To believe something is important, you know, I mean, to, to remember that dictators are just men that die and fall away as you know, whatever Gandhi's quote about that was, you know, isn't healthy because we hold, we hold government sacred. And it's the matrix we're all born into. You know, that's, those are the cultural norms around us because of statism. Um, you know, if you think that's kind of a far-fetched idea even for to achieve immortality, there's already another organism on this planet that's already found a way to attain that. Uh, the jellyfish, you know, in, in the ocean. Uh, so there's, there's an organism, a living organism here on Earth that's found a way to kind of cheat death and that is able to revert back into a youthful stage. Uh, and of course, it could fall prey to predation. Yeah, it's so Cthulian, you know. Behold, yeah. behold, behold. <laughs> this little polyp flutters by, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> could fall also prey to illnesses, but th this this living organism has found a way to to reverse the process. You know, there's no reason us as human beings can't uh, find a way to achieve the same thing. Well, even uh, then, it's not a static thing; it's a cyclic thing. Yeah. I mean, perhaps we're too caught up on our identity as what we are now, because as as this whole you know, like you say, organ regeneration um, process steadily progress, we won't be in our own bodies after a while. Uh, you know, we'll have completely, you know, swapped, our, swapped ourselves out for new parts. Our sense of self, you know, what we incorporate ourselves into. The fact that we're now more linked in than ever with a collective consciousness. I mean, is that the direction we're involving in? That our thoughts are put more, like, out there for everybody to see. Our images, our personality, you know. We're, hmm. we're pouring it into each other more and more. So, as much as this movement is about self-determinism. I think we're moving more in a direction where we exchange things freely and thereby have a different sense of self. Different than the one the government gave us. Yeah. Better than nationalism, hopefully. Because nationalism is an ugly fucking thing. Just look at immigration policies. It's not, uh, with nationalism, the moon is the farthest you'll ever get. Uh, you know, in, in terms of uh, trying to find ways to ex extend the human lifespan and, and find ways to kind of... Um, you know, prevent death, prevent illnesses, um, and, and pain and injury. You know, that's the solution we're going to have to look into, especially if we want to be, uh, a, you know, a space-faring civilization. Oh, and yeah, I still need to look this up, but it has appeared in a meme that more people have signed up for the non-return colonization um, proposed trip to Mars than have signed up for Obamacare. I, for one, take comfort in that. <laughs> and of course, they have better websites than government. It speaks of an optimism of the species. Yeah, well. yeah. Yeah, again. I'd rather live well than live in fear. Yeah. It's the free market that's going to help create solutions to finally get off this rock, to colonize Mars, to explore, to go where no free man, woman, or child has gone before. Um, and it's not going to beat their government. Now, that was a long time ago, the last time they were on the moon. 
uh, you know, they, since space shuttle is exploding and cutting back public funding to try to create education awareness with NASA. Uh, and again, it's all unsustainable. It eventually starts to collapse and the quality starts to depreciate. And, you know, you can never get there through government. It's never going to happen. Um, it's only through a free market that we can come together and find creative solutions together on a voluntary basis. When you liberate these minds, you know, liberate the entire earth, there's billions of ideas that could come forth to find best ways to try to achieve that liftoff. And I guess for me personally, I find that that's, um, people talk about what, why we're here, what's our purpose or anything like that. I would imagine it starts first getting off this rock. Um, you know, I guess you look at the entire history of, of earth and uh, different kind of um, catalyst, uh, catastrophic uh, impacts that have occurred that wiped out many species. Uh, you know, comets, of course, being one of the major ones, but you know, we're nothing but a blimp on that timeline. And, you know, anything else could happen, you know, solar flare from, from the sun, you know, with the radioactivity can, you know, wipe off, the, you know, this planet with the, of, of life. Um, so I guess it kind of behooves us as a species to find a way to finally get off this rock to control our own fate so we don't have to witness our own extinction. Um, well, I think beyond, like, genetic vanity, because that can only see us so far. It's just we... We want to see all there is to see, you know. Yeah. We're the cats. We're on the wrong side of the door, you know. Why can't we do this, you know? That's what we're constantly asking government. Why is it so bad if we do this? And there's not a lifetime to do everything you want to do. Uh. <laughs> and more often than not, the answer is, you know, because I said not to, you know. And, I mean, the scientific community is out there with constantly varying ideas, but they can, you know, come to peaceful compromises about what the almost definite possible truth is. Yeah. In this, you know, non-partisan, non-governmental way. But all too often that is distilled into one form of lobbyism that simply says, don't do it or we will throw you in a cage. Those are the only options with government. Uh, tools of, instruments of If torture. you litter, <laughs> it's another excuse for us to take your money. What does that change? Nothing really. Nothing. You shouldn't litter though. I mean, it's just a silly idea. Recycling is convenient and, you know, productive and, you know... It's beneficial to us, and it's beneficial to other members of this planet, and, you know, it's just, it's resources, man! Be smart about shit! Yeah. Um, so, yeah, well, with that, hopefully you enjoyed the uh, episode of The Resistance. Thank you for watching. My name is Cal Moloney. And I'm Rachel, the non-perky one. <laughs> but yeah, oh, shout out to the beginning of the story about the officer exposing himself. If you wish to dress up as the masturbating cop, it is the Halloween season. <laughs> or the masturbating bear so, from yeah. Conan O'Brien. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or if you wish to take on any role in life because, you know, your job is not who you are. No, don't attach too much identity to what they have told you you were supposed to be. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, come and dress up as anything in premiere costumes. In Richmond, Virginia. See, I, I learned how to shamelessly oh. plug before the episode is over. <laughs> so there you have it. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Share, subscribe if you can. And I'll see you guys at the victory party. Take good care. Au revoir.